everyone, in this tutorial, we're going to show you how swim documents begin to become a part of your development lifecycle. What we're going to do is discover documentation in your IDE, be able to maintain those documents when code refactors, and lastly, show you how to create a document easily and code couple it within. Let's get started. So first things first, how do you know where documentation lives? With SWIM, documentation lives in a .swm folder in your repository as a markdown file. So you can search for this throughout your repo, but more importantly, you may not know what you're searching for. And when you come across a code area like so, where you need to understand a little bit more details, we have an indicator here. Let me zoom in. This wave icon is an indicator to you as a developer that a swim document exists in relation to this snippet. So we can go ahead and click it and open that document side by side and begin to explore and understand the importance behind this particular snippet. And as you see, it's tracked and up to date by swim. Just as importantly, we can move to the next area of the code and see what the flow in the code is. We don't have to worry about going through this entire code base to see what the next call is. We can just click into built in H here and open that file to see what the next step is and get the context we need. Move back to our swim document and go to the next step in git C and see what the next step in that flow of code is as well. This is really powerful when it comes down to eliminating context switching and staying within your IDE to get all of the context you need and stay focused. As you notice all of these up-to-date indicators and these green checks throughout this document, that is SWIM telling you that these are code coupled elements that are up-to-date with the code. There are multiple types of code coupled elements that you can use within SWIM. There's your code snippet and there's also your smart token. This is a one word value. Think your methods, classes, anything that has specific information that you need to highlight within your code base or your explanation. Lastly, you can also code couple your paths. So in the event of any refactor, you'll be able to reliably understand that this code will be maintained regardless of what happens. Let's show you what that looks like now. If we go to this command struct smart token, which is located in git C. Let's open that file. Let's move it over here for context and go ahead and change the value of commands to subcommands. We can save that change and note that when we come back to the swim document, we verified that the snippet or the value was up to date. And in this case, commands change to subcommands. So we know that that's a correct change because we made that refactor so we can accept that change and that snippet is now updated. Notice that there's a subcommands token here. We can click into that and update that value as well. Now we have a reliable document that has been up to date with the refactor of code. So we save that document and when we go to our change log, we know that these are the files that we just modified. And so we can reliably push documentation that has been edited or created both on the code area for that feature set or the swim document, because remember, this is documentation as code. So let's go back to our swim app and create a document. So we'll close this file and click create. All right. So notice in our file tree that we have now an untitled file that lives within the swim folder. All swim documents will live there and we'll give it a title. Press enter or save. Oh, let's modify that. And rename the file. So notice that it changed. We're good to go. And now as a developer, I can begin to document as I write my features. So all we have to do is enter our slash command. And the first three elements we see are code coupled elements. So we can add our code snippet. Swim tells us to go select some code anywhere within our repository. We go ahead and select these two if statements and add them to our document. And it's really easy to add additional code snippets. So we can open another file, select the lines that we need, go back to our swim document and add those as well. So the only thing left for us as a developer is to just explain the why this snippet is important. 
If we want to add additional code coupled elements, such as a smart token, we can initialize it with a backtick. And all that's left from there is to be able to search for the value that we want to highlight within our explanation. And you see here, we have a result that is referenced in this snippet. We can add it and you see now that we have a code coupled smart token. Once we're done with these changes, we can go ahead and save our file. And again, this is part of our commit and now part of our development workflow. That's it for this tutorial. We were able to show you how to discover documentation within your repository or have documentation find you. We also refactored code and maintained the swim documents that were affected by the refactor. And lastly, showed you how easy it was to create a snippet and add it to a swim document to be able to be committed. Until the next tutorial, happy swimming.